Well, hey there, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk Real Estate Investing. I'm your host, Sharon Bornhold, and I'm really glad you're tuning in today. Uh, you all know that I think probates are one of the best niches on the planet. They're certainly one of the most lucrative niches on the planet. And that reason is, of course, because they almost always have to sell the property in the estate to close the estate. And that's so that the heirs and the creditors get paid. So that means that the house is almost always going to be either sold to an investor or listed to a realtor, which kind of depends on if it's a pretty house or if it's a house that needs a lot of work. Now, we know that we're looking for houses that need a lot of work. But the question always gets to be, you know, there's, there's so much competition according to people, and how do you stand out in the crowd? You know, how do you, how do, you do that? And how do you reach these motivated sellers? Well, the best way to reach these motivated sellers is not by picking up the phone when someone's mama has passed away. You do that by sending a nurture series of letters, a direct mail campaign, where your goal is to be there when they are ready to sell the property. So I want you to really focus on the part where I say nurture series, because people are at different stages of grief when they open the probate process. Now, every now and then you'll find someone that has an attorney or an uncle or someone who's not in the throes of um, being grief stricken over the, the passing of someone. But in general, it's a hard time for folks that have to tend to the business of the estate and deal with their feelings at the same time. So today I'm going to deconstruct a sample a probate letter so that you understand how it's written, why it's put together the way it is, and I'm also going to give you an opportunity to get a sample probate letter for yourself. Now, you might also remember that I've been talking about my probate investing roadmap, which, by the way, you can get completely free too, um, and I'll tell you how to do that. But if with the probate investing roadmap and the letter, you can uh, start mailing to probates and start your probate business just with those two things. So the probate investing roadmap will tell you the exact steps in the probate process, including when you can buy the property. And then the letter will give you a sample of the series of letters that you'll need to create for uh, staying in touch with these folks so that when they're ready to sell, you'll be ready for them. Now, Today, we're going to talk about um, five, five things that you really need to understand. And, that, and we're going to go through those things one at a time. So, and, I, and I want you to know that once you have a basic understanding of these things, it's going to be so much easier for you. So number one, I'm going to talk about why I think it's important to use this kind of mail piece. Um, it's because it's proven. I've used it for more than a more than a decade, and it works. And the different uh, variations of this letter series, they are they are designed to uh, lead people down a path, lead them down a path, so that they uh, so that you have built that know, like, and trust factor with these folks uh, through your mail pieces. And when they're ready, they're going to think of you. Now, number two is we're going to talk about how many letters do you send? You know, when do you start mailing and when do you stop? Well, the short answer is you start when the probate is opened and you stop when you buy the house, someone else buys the house, or they come off your list for one reason or another. You know, maybe it's just, there's just no way that you can buy the house. It's 100% uh, financed and uh, the value just isn't there. And you, you are not maybe a lease option investor or one of those strategies um, like that. Because generally, remember that the, the house has to be sold. It can't, you're not gonna be able to use creative finance strategies with probates in general. So number one would be, why should you use this type of mail piece? And number two is how many, how many letters do you send? You know, when do you start and when do you stop? And number three is why is this called a nurture series? Well, 
as I've touched on many times before, people are at different stages of their uh, of of this process when they open the probate. For some, it's very new. It's still very raw for them. Some people don't open the probate for six months or a year, so they're in a better frame of mind to deal with the business of settling the estate. But your purpose is to just say, hey, I'm here. I know this might take a while. I know you may not be ready to sell the house, but when you're ready, I'm a cash buyer and I can buy this house from you. So that's number three. And number four is all about the competition. So what I want you to understand about your perceived competition is when it comes to probate, you really don't have that much competition. You have a handful. Now, it may be that when you send your first or second letter, there's 10, 15, maybe 20 letters that'll hit that person's mailbox. You definitely need to start mailing at that point but that is in most cases not the point where they're going to be ready to sell. Some will, I have bought houses off of one letter, but, but most of the time it's going to take a little while. Now, I've talked about this a lot of times too, more than 80% of your, of, your, uh, of your deals will come at or beyond the fifth mailing. Now that's a big thing to understand. 81% of your deals will come at or beyond your fifth mailing. So guess when most people stop? 90% of the people stop on or before the third mailing. So I want you to get really clear on the fact that direct mail in general is a, uh, you need to build a long runway. With probates, it's very important that you're there in the beginning, that you're there every month, that you mail every 30 days, and that you stay in the game until this until it plays out. Uh, in general, most probates are settled in a year, 18 months, something like that. So you're not talking about four or five years. You're talking about a relatively uh, short amount of time. And then finally would be the mail piece itself and why it is so important to use this type of a mail piece and we're going to go through this, this particular mail piece, um, you know, piece, piece by piece. So if you want, you know, like I said, you can, you can dive into probate investing with having your letter and revising the letter to make a series of letters with the probate investing roadmap. You can know the process from start to finish with the roadmap. But if you really want to become a probate expert, you're probably going to want to take a look at my course, Probate Investing Simplified. So um, I want to pull up, the, um, pull up the letter that we're going to talk about now. So give me just a second here. We're going to pull that up and share that on the screen. So first at the top, now this seems pretty, pretty, uh, simple, it would be your company name, your address, your city and state, and your phone number. But I get a lot of questions on this. For instance, if my company is um, Random Properties LLC, and I just made that up, so um, it's your company's name LLC, but your branding is Bob Buys Houses, which, which do you want to put there for your company name? Well, it depends. You know, I think you can be um, Bob of Bob by Houses at, at the end, certainly, and have your company name up there. What I did personally was I had my company name up there because it came uh, to credibility. I wanted people to know that I was a real person with a real company, and I wanted them to have the security that I could close their deal. But with that being said, you can go up here to this first line. You can go up here and you could certainly, if you've heavily branded yourself as Bob Buys Houses or Sharon Buys Houses, you could put that up there. It's, there's no hard, fast, right or wrong way to do this. But you want to have this something up there that says I am a, you know, a, a legitimate buyer. Now, you all know that I'm a fan of using this type of letter. And the reason is that I believe that branding is everything. Remember, marketing is how you get deals and branding is why they choose you over your competition. 
So it's why they choose you. So everything that you do needs to say that I am a reliable, trustworthy investor that can close your deal. So that's the reason I think you should use white letters. Using postcards early on is a terrible idea because these people, as I said, they're grief stricken. They don't want to get a postcard that says, hey, let me buy your house for cents on the pennies on the dollar. You know, they, they don't want to see that. So next would be and would be the name of the executor, the address of the executor, and the city, state, and zip. So that would be that part right there. Now, you can set this all up, each one of these fields. So this would be set in your letter, your what I call your header here. This, this part up here would be set to uh, just print as is in your letter. But these things down here, name of executor, address of executor, city, state, and zip, all need to be individual fields on a spreadsheet, as does the deceased name and the, and the property address. And then dear Mary, dear John, however you want to do it, would be the executor's name. So when you to set up a mail merge uh, spreadsheet, uh, and this is, I'm going to make a video on this soon, but you can also look this up just on YouTube. It's really simple to, to figure this out. Uh, but you set up a field with the name of the executor, first name, last name, address of the executor, and then city, state, and zip all need to be separated into a field. Trust me on this, you'll, it will not merge up correctly every time if you don't do it that way. Deceased name, the uh, address of the property, and the uh, name of the executor. So those are the fields you need to have on your letter. Now the rest of this can be the body of the letter. And I wanna go through this, and this is one of, um, I think this is uh, one of my first uh, letters in the series. Now we've talked about this before. Do you, do you, talk about the white elephant in the room, that someone has passed away. Well, I believe that it's easier in, in almost every interest, instance to talk about it in the letter because they are going to ask you how you found out about it. <laughs> you can be 100% sure that that's gonna happen. So you can either address it in the letter or you can address it on the phone when they call and say, how did you get this information? But there's no, um, there's no one way, uh, one way that you know is right and the other way is wrong. My way that I do it is that I just say straight out, I understand you've been appointed by the court, the probate court as the executor or personal representative for the estate. I'm very sorry for your loss, and I understand this is a difficult time for everyone. I like to set the stage right in the beginning that. I know it's a probate. I know that they may not be ready to sell that I understand and empathize with their situation. So that's how I start the letter out. And then I go on, you know, they always want to know basically what's, what's in it for them because they really don't care about what you do. So I want to tell them how I can help them. So you need to tell them in this terrible time in their life, what would make uh, things easier for them? And that would be for you to say, you know, I want to let you know how I can help. Don't assume that they're going to understand this. Next, I like to say, I buy homes and other type of property from executors and heirs trying to settle estates. So in one sentence, you have told them exactly what you can do for them. Now, in the next sentence, you sweeten the deal. I pay cash and I close quick, quickly so that the heirs and the executors don't have to spend more money on um, you know, probate attorneys, mortgage payments. If you need help cleaning out the house, we can do that too. This is something else I've talked about a lot. Cleaning out the house is one of the single biggest hurdles that they have to overcome. It's problematic for them. It's, it's often gut-wrenching, throwing away their... Um, their parents' belongings or donating them because they know how important they were to them. So if you can say to them, look, um, take what you want, I'll take care of the rest, you have lifted a gigantic weight off of their shoulders. 
So the next thing they're going to be concerned about is if they're going to sell to an investor is, boy, this house really needs a lot of work. So it's important that you tell them, I'll buy it as is. I don't care what condition it's in. So I buy property in its current condition so you don't have to worry about making costly repairs and so forth. You also don't have to worry about upkeep, uh, any mortgage payments, utilities, grass cutting. I will take care of the entire problem for you. Now, when we talk about sending a nurture sequence and they see the same similar information month after month after month, when they're ready to sell, if you have, if you have built the no like, and trust, you've stayed in the game, you show up every month with your letter and with your offer to help when they are ready, when they're ready, they are going to call you. I will guarantee you're going to be one of the people, if not the only pe person that gets called. Now, I spoke to someone yesterday who had purchased a house in probate and there was no other competition. That does happen. It depends on your market. But I want you to think about this for a minute. In my city, maybe there are three, I don't know, 3,300 or so realtors. I could be off on that number a little bit, but there, there are thousands of realtors. If you're going for a house on the MLS, that's your competition. So if you start out and you have 20 or 25 people that's sending letters and you get further down the road and it's down to three to five, is that really a lot of competition? I, I beg to differ that it is. All you have to do is, you know, stay on point with your marketing. You have to show up, show up every single month. And you have to have a brand that is consistent and you have to uh, build and develop this, re this relationship even before you ever talk to them, before they ever contact you. They have to get the feeling that they can trust you and that they know you. So the whole no like and trust thing again. Now you've you've told them you know you know that they're that they're overwhelmed by the long list of things they have to do. That in addition to their regular lives, their jobs, their children, and all those other things, that you know that they have to settle the business of this estate. You have told them how you can help them. You have told them that you will buy the property in its current condition. They don't have to worry about making any repairs. So what you're doing is you're removing all objections to them working with you. And then you can tell them, and since I'm going to buy your property rather than to list it, you won't have to hope that it sells. You won't have to sit back and wait and hope that someone can come in and qualify for a loan and then bring you an inspection report that gives you a whole bunch of different things that you need to fix, and you're not gonna to have to be paying those higher insurance rates. So you're, you're telling them things that maybe they have not even thought about, to be honest. Maybe they have not really thought about the fact that they're gonna have all of these different expenses. So it's not an in-your-face in marketing piece, but it is, laid out in a very deliberate manner so that you hit all of the bullet points, you hit all of their pain points, you tell them exactly how you can help them, you tell them that the condition of the property is no problem and that you're gonna buy it for all cash. And that it, they're not going to have to hope that it sells on the MLS. And that's what they're doing when they list it. They're hoping they're going to find a buyer for this distressed property. Now, if it's a pretty house, it's almost always going to be listed on the MLS, certainly in the current market, which is a seller's market. So you say, please contact me if you might want to sell. I would change that up later on to when you're ready to sell, uh, when the time is right. So it's a matter of tweaking up your words, changing up your words a bit, and giving them uh, all of the information in a kind and compassionate way in a letter. So, you know, you're going to say you can reach me by, you want to give them multiple ways to reach you. Certainly you want to have your phone number on there. You want to have your email address 
and you want to have your website. And folks, you have to have a website and you need a probate page. If you're going to work in probate, you need a page on your website that uh, tells people, here's why you should choose me. Once again, it's about the branding. It's, I'm a probate expert. One of the things I do is uh, work in the niche of probates. So you, you want to be able to show them that you're just not somebody, not just anybody who kind of thinks they can work in probates. So you're going you're gonna to build that evidence on your website, but the, your letters alone are going to tell people that you know what you're doing. So the final thing that you would do is you would sign your name. And again, this could be your company name. And if you put a real like LLC name at the top, you might say it's Bob, Bob Jenkins of Bob Bass Houses. Or, you know, that's a, that's a branding thing. I'm happy to, uh, if you've got any questions, send me an email at Sharon at SharonBornholt.com. I'll be happy to kind of talk to you about that. Again, there's no one way to do it. Uh, people that have branded themselves like uh, Bob Bass Houses, they may want to put Bob Bass Houses at the top. That's okay if that's, if that's the way you choose to do it. Just be sure that there is no doubt about the fact that you are an investor that can close their deal. Now, one thing I wanna add here that I didn't touch on was uh, your address. So your address should not be your home address. It should really not be a post office box address. It should be a real address. And what I recommend you use is a service like the UPS store. Now, there may be different uh, versions of this and different, um, it may be, you know, called a different name. But what that is, in my area, it's a post office box is $10, $15 a month. A UPS box is $20, $25 a month. And your area may vary. It may be up or down just a little bit. But what that gives you is an address, like 9462 Brownsboro Road, suite number, whatever it is. So you will get a, a real address that, that looks to everybody seeing your letter that it is a real address. Unless they have a post office, or a mailbox, you know, a PO box at mailboxes, et cetera, or UPS stores or whatever they're called in your area. They're not going to know that that's not a real address. But it is important that you have an address. I think, in my opinion, it gives you more credibility it makes you uh, look like you're more stable. So let's run through these things again, the five things. We talked about why it's so important to use this type of mail piece as opposed to a yellow letter, which looks unprofessional in my opinion. People, after having done this for more than a decade, they don't like, yellow, they don't like getting yellow letters. They do not like getting postcards that refer to the estate or the fact that someone has passed away, their loved one has passed away, and they get a postcard. Uh, the only thing they hate, they hate more is getting called on the telephone. You know, don't do that right out, out of the ballpark. There's a time and a place for that, but it's not in the beginning when... Uh, hey, we just got done with the funeral, you know, looked up an obituary and I see someone's passed away, let me give them a call. I'm gonna be first. I'm gonna be there first to buy the house. Trust me, folks, that will definitely backfire on you. So we've gone over the mail piece, we've torn the mail piece apart and people sometimes want to add a second page or something to this, don't do that. People don't have a lot of time and when they've added the settling of the estate to their whole agenda, trust me, they have even less time. So you want to get right to the point. You want to stay on point with your, with your letter. Uh, we've talked about how, uh, when do you, how many do you send? You want to send a letter every month until the house is sold. Until you buy the house, someone else buys the house, or there's some reason why uh, they come off, come off the list. Like you just can't make a deal out of it. We've talked about why this is a nurture series. It's because you're going to reach out to them in what is undeniably a very difficult time in their life, and you're going to nurture them down a path so that when they're ready to sell, you will be the obvious choice. 
Uh, this is very much by design. It very much ties your marketing and your branding together. And it is a kind and compassionate way to work in this niche. Uh, we've talked about your competition. And as I said, we've talked about the probate letter. So uh, you can get a copy of the probate letter over on my blog, the Louisville Gals Real Estate blog. It's right there in the right sidebar, completely free. If you want the probate investing roadmap, I'll put this in the show notes. It's uh, the, where you get that is probateinvestingsimplified.com forward slash roadmap. You can get your step-by-step -step process. Uh, it's a graphic with uh, all the explanations about working in probate. So you can get that completely free. And that will tell you when you can, what to do, you know, what happens first, second, third, when you can buy the house, and then uh, you, you'll be educated in the entire process. But I would like to encourage you to take a look at my course because uh, in my course, I have the entire series of letters for both agents and investors. So at first I had just investor letters and then I had a number of agents ask me for, uh, you know, is this for me too? Like, yes, probate investing simplified is absolutely for you. And I have to tell you, you have almost zero competition agents out there. People are not um, using this course uh, format of marketing to people that are in probates. Uh, probably my guess is 80 or 85% of the properties uh, in this market will be sold on the MLS. That's a lot of houses where they must be sold. So, you know, get on the bandwagon agents, get in there where investors have been for a while. This is a very profitable niche. It's not a niche where you had to go out and you hope you get a listing. These people have to sell the property. If it went through probate, they're gonna to have to sell it. Otherwise it was directly inherited or it went through a trust or for some other reason, it did not go through probates. But check out the course, uh, just the direct mail bonus alone, which you can use in any niche, whether it be vacants, um, absentee owners, code violations. Once you learn how to do direct mail, you can use it in any and all niches in real estate. It's all the same process. The mail piece will just change, and I talk about that in the course. We also have a big accountability piece. Uh, we have regular calls, video calls, during the time of the six-week course. And the course, one thing I wanna point out, so you don't skip from step A to, hey, I just got the course, to step six, to the marketing module, where you get all of your letters, which are bonuses, and some a bunch of other cool things. You don't, I, it is set up that way by design so that you don't spend a lot of money on direct mail when you don't understand the middle part. When you don't understand the mindset, you don't understand really the process, the terminology, and all those pieces in the middle, which admittedly can be a little bit boring. But folks, that, what's, that is what makes you come out as a probate investing expert at the end of six short weeks. I will tell you guaranteed, if you take the course, you implement the course, you do actually have to implement the course. You have to learn the steps. Anyone can be a probate investing expert in six weeks, and it is for real estate investors, and it is for agents. So don't forget to get your probate investing roadmap. Don't forget to head over to the Louisville Gals Real Estate blog and get your sample probate letter. You can, you can use that letter to make a series of six letters or so that you can send out and then restart again. And in the course, I talk about scrubbing your list and, and what you do, uh, how you do this entire process. But if you have any questions, just email me, as I said, Sharon at SharonBornholt.com. And I think that's, that's it for today. And I will see you next week, same time, same place. Bye for now.